There are 18 AI trends that are blowing up right now, but not all of them are worth the hype. Some are the future of everything, while others are straight up dumpster fire. So today I'm ranking every major AI trend from S tier legends to F tier flops, and a few of those are gonna pretty much ruffle some feathers I would say. So right here, I've got a pile of the 18 most talked about AI trends nowadays. From multimodal madness to fake AI side hustles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag them one by one into their rightful tier. Without further ado, let's get started. So first of all, we have the personalized AI tutors. These are pretty much revolutionizing education in my opinion. And personalized AI tutors adapt to your unique learning style. It's a very good thing that you can learn from. They have dynamic study plans and interactive help as well. They can break down even the most complex concepts into bites sized understandable lessons. I think in my opinion, traditional education is kind of getting left behind because it's not adapting to modern times. And that's the exact reason why I think this is the perfect time for AI education to take over. Now, of course, in order for AI education to take over, it needs to do it right. And if it's going to be right or not, we're gonna see that. Now, while personalized AI tutors have not reached mass adoption yet, their long-term potential to democratize quality education is massive. So that's why I would give it a solid A tier. Next up, we have AI writing detectors. Now, these tools sound useful, but fail miserably in execution. They regularly misidentify human written text as AI generated and vice versa. It happened to me multiple times. I even tried joking with this and I, I wrote a text myself and it said that it's AI. And I think that they have a lot of bias because some tools told me that it's 80% AI, some tools told me that it's 5% AI. They all should work the same way, I guess. But the founders of these tools usually have material interests in mind and not your personal interest. So I think that in schools and universities, they are pretty much causing unnecessary panic. And in workplaces, they create a lot of confusion and mistrust. And you know, with such high rates of false positiveness and limited accuracy, they are currently more harmful than helpful. And I would give it a complete F tier. Next up, we have the copy and paste prompt eBooks. Now this trend is one of the worst trends of all time. It's basically the poster child for low effort monetization. And what is this? People are, are basically compiling basic chat GPT prompts that are already available for free into poorly designed PDFs and they try to sell them. That, that's pretty much it. They try to sell PDFs that are written with chat GPT. There's no originality at all in this, no value, and it reeks of a cash grab. It's only about the money. Nobody provides any kind of value whatsoever. The only thing they are doing is they are pretty much, you know, flooding the marketplaces with noise. F tier stay away. Now, next up, we have a very interesting one. This is the multimodal AI. Now, this is where things get mind blowing. I think that multimodal models like GPT-40 can understand and respond to a combination of, you know, text, images, audio, video, anything. You can upload a chart, you can upload a PDF, you can upload an image, a video. It will respond accordingly the way you want it to respond. You can get a voice response, you can get a text response, and this is an AI that sees, hears, and also talks to you just like a human assistant. And this is easily one of the most exciting trends in AI. This is no doubt an S tier. Now I want to explain myself and I want to make you understand that multimodal AI is one of the most important things that ever happened to AI so far. Of course, there are a few more things that I would put into the S tier as well from this list. Stay tuned to find out which ones, but it's a very rare accomplishment for anything in the AI world to be included in the S tier. Now, next up, we have the AI cold email generator. Now, these tools pretty much aim to automate your outreach, but, but most of them just spit out bland, cookie cutter emails. They, they are not special at all. Uh, they, they seem like they are created with AI. They have absolutely no personalization. And we all know that when everybody uses the same templates, your engagement will definitely drop. Still, you know, I want to give it a benefit of the doubt. And still, with good customization, they can actually help you scale. But I wouldn't put my money on that. So they're pretty useful in niche applications, I would say, or with, you know, a lot of human touch added. But still, if I'm going to be the one who's going to provide a lot of touch in there then what's the whole point of me using an AI to write my emails but you know if I look at it out of the box meh, I will give it a C tier Oh, next up we have the AI short form content. Now, even though platforms like YouTube, Instagram, TikTok are spitting out short form videos right now like crazy, 
this trend is crucial to understand and I want to make you understand why this is going to be something that you definitely need to get. Algorithms are shifting. Things are not what they used to be and creators need to adapt and do it fast. It's not that AI generated content is bad, is that platforms are going to start to protect authenticity and not favor AI. And knowing this will put you ahead of the curve. I would put this into the B tier because we're somewhere in the middle. It doesn't have a lot of value right now and platforms are kind of shifting towards banning AI generated content. But still, there's a lot of value to be learned from AI short form content. Now, next up, we have AI agents. Now, AI agents such as Devon, AutoGPT and others are turning prompts into full on workflows. They can break down your goals, plan your steps, browse the internet and make real time decisions for you. Everything with a minimal input from the user. That's the key part of this. Imagine having a digital employee that just, you know, handles your to do list and does everything for you. This is the future of work. Check out OpenAI's agent. We're going to launch a video about that pretty soon. It's an agent that pretty much does everything for you. You can do shopping, you can plan your vacations, you can browse the internet. There are a lot of things and this is just a beta model that still has a lot of bugs. But I think that in my opinion, this is the future of work. It has a lot of potential. That's why I'm going to put this in S tier. You're going to see this around in the next five to 10 years a lot. Ooh, next time we have an interesting one and that is AI dating and girlfriend apps. I put them together. Now hear me out. They are trending, but mainly as a novelty or meme content, not necessarily for the real value that they provide. These apps kind of try to simulate companionship or relationships with AI, but the result is offer, you know, it, it feels hollow or unsettling. I would say the use cases are pretty limited. In my opinion, everything seems like copy and paste. Of course, ethical concerns are kind of rising. I'm not trying to say that humans are better than AI because, you know, some people definitely could need an AI companion. So I'm not trying to downplay anybody here, but I think that it's not yet at that level in which we can actually count on it as a companion. So it's not useless, but it's also far from being meaningful. That's why I'm putting it as a C tier. Next up, we have AI in job interviews. Now we all know those, we've seen videos about them uh, from tools that are preparing the answers to full on A bots that are going to do the interviews for you. I think that this trend raises a lot of questions. Now, you know, it might help nervous applicants, but it also blurs the line between preparation and deception. And I'm sure you've seen those examples in which uh, the, the person from HR that, that holds the interview is asking the person that they are interviewing to share their screen just so they can see if they have any chat GPT or something like that on the screen. Meeting a work-life balance and what specific methods to use. Problem solving and adapt to various roles. And you know. That's why I'm saying that companies may soon adapt to detect this behavior early on and I would say it's nothing but a risky shortcut. I don't think there has ever been a case in which somebody has gotten a job, a, a high paying job with the help of any of these tools and actually performing the job. It's interesting, but it doesn't provide any kind of real value. That's why I put it at C tier. Now, next up, we have voice cloning. You know, with just a few seconds of your audio, we all know about 11 labs. You can replicate your voice nearly perfectly. And this technology is game changing for dubbing, voiceovers, content localization and accessibility at the same time. And mind you not, it's already being used in film, in gaming, in music. But at the same time, the potential for misuse is also huge. And the balance is, is pretty much the same here. So I would put it an A tier with a watchful eye. I, I would keep my eyes on this trend. Now, next up, we have prompt marketplaces. You know, the, the idea sounds promising, I would say. A shop with high quality prompts. It's pretty easy, right? Everybody would like that. But in reality, most listings that you see in these kinds of marketplaces are repackaged junk. Uh, and you know, if you can find a niche or ultra specific prompt, maybe, maybe it's worth it. But the average marketplace is nothing but a digital flea market, I would say. 
that's why we're gonna put this at a C. Now, next up, we have AI art tools. We are familiar with tools such as Midjourney or DALI, and they have opened the floodgates for AI generated art. We've seen those everywhere. They are amazing for prototyping, storytelling, and design inspiration as well. But you know, with so many lookalike images and declining novelty, I think that the mainstream impact is kind of fading a bit. You know, they are still very useful. Uh, I would put it at a B tier. If you were to ask me six months ago, I would put it at an A tier. It's, uh, it's been a very important part of AI as a whole. But right now, I think that the next step is uh, video generation, which is, of course, one step ahead. And uh, image generation will reach its cap sometime in the, in the near future, I would say. And everybody would be focused on video generation. Next up, we have enterprise AI tools. Uh, you know, they are not flashy, not everyone knows about them, uh, but these tools are, are driving serious productivity gains in, in companies. And not only big companies, but even small companies that can benefit from AI. Have you heard about Slack GPT maybe, Copilot, Notion AI? We are using these tools day by day and you know, they are making our meetings shorter, writing faster and our workflows even smoother. Because you know, they're built into the tools that teams already are using on a day-to-day -day basis and the adoption curve is seamless. No question about that. High impact and low friction, definitely an A tier. Next up, we have open source LLMs. We all know about Llama, Mistral, and many other open source models that are disrupting the industry. Developers can fine tune them, you can do whatever you wanna do with them, you can run them locally, you can innovate freely. And this pretty much breaks the dominance of closed systems like OpenAI, and it encourages collaboration, transparency, and decentralization. This is also a strong, very strong A tier. Next up, we have AI generated videos. Now, before this, we've talked about AI art tools. This is the next step. And we all know about this text to video tool such as Runway, Sora, VO3, and they are rapidly evolving. You can now animate ideas from a few sentences. And you know, early versions look like experiments. Yes, we all know those videos with Will Smith eating spaghetti. If not, here it is on the screen. But today they are bordering on film grade quality. You can literally create a movie from these eight second prompts and tie them all together and it will be amazing. And I think that the, the, the impact on marketing, storytelling, and content creation will be absolutely huge. This is why I will put this at an A tier. If you were to ask me again in like six months, this will definitely be an S tier. Now, next up, we have one of our favorites for our internet gurus, and that is faceless YouTube AI channels. Now, this trend had, had its moment, no doubt about that. Channels that are using AI to churn out faceless, emotionless content. And they blew up briefly, uh, but it collapsed just as fast. So if you want to do that right now, if you want to open up a faceless YouTube channel, don't do it. I know that there are a lot of gurus that are picking up the scraps from other bigger gurus right now. And they are trying to get clients for their programs. If you see something like that, please do not join them. It doesn't work anymore. This trend collapsed a long time ago. Viewers want authenticity, not robotic narration and stock footage and, and B-rolls that are generated by AI. And oh, if you didn't know, YouTube will not give you any more eyeballs if your content is generated by AI. Think about that. And for now, it's only YouTube, but I'm 100% TikTok is going to follow up with Instagram. So this is definitely a, a dead trend, definitely an F. Next up, definitely another guru favorite that is passive income AI. Without further ado, this definitely goes into the F tier. I don't even want to explain myself, but this is like the snake oil of the AI world. Influencers are pushing the same thing. If you don't believe me, go ahead on the internet and search for it. Everybody's using the same sentence, quote unquote, make $10,000 per month with AI. 100% passive without doing anything, something like that. They are usually selling recycled nonsense. They don't have a real strategy, no real product, just vague claims and overpriced courses. That's what you're gonna pay for if you're gonna fall into this trap. They are misleading and exploitative. Definitely an F tier. Let's move on to the last one, which is AI Chrome extensions. Now there's a sea of Chrome extensions out there that are promising you AI magic. In my opinion and in my experience, I think that 90% of them do not deliver. Only like 10% of them are actually worth it. 
And you know, there are a few standouts like uh, Merlin or Compose AI. They are generally helpful, but only for a small percentage of people from a small niche that are actually using them. And most of them are just wrappers around ChatGPT with no real innovation. It, it, they're great when they work, but they are inconsistent overall. And I, I, I even forgot about this trend. I would put this at D. All right, guys, so we just ranked the most talked about AI trends from S tier to F tier. And if you're still using any of the F tier stuff right here on my screen, you're literally wasting your time. But here's the thing, there are new AI tools that are dropping every single week, and there's a chance that some of them will be on the next S tier. We're gonna remake this video in about six months, and we're gonna have to see how things have changed. But until then, if you wanna gain access to game-changing AI tools, make sure to check out There's an AI for That and subscribe to our newsletter, because if you miss the next trend, you are definitely going to regret it. So guys, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It would greatly help us with the YouTube algorithm. And thanks for watching again. Have an amazing day. Bye-bye.